So we're here for the week four for the machine learning with Andrew Ng course uh, through Coursera. And I'd love to introduce you to a new member, uh, Brett Roberts. What's going on? How's it going? <laughs> Brett, where have you been? I've been uh, all over the last couple of weeks. I've been stuck in Utah due to the cyclone bomb, bomb cyclone, blizzard, Boston, hashtag 2018, whatever it's or called. Or Utah. Or, <laughs> Utah. <laughs> Utah. Yes, yeah, so I was tagged in Utah for a couple of days and then found my way to Nashville to hang out with uh, Kyle Prinz. Uh, waiting for the snow to clear, and then made my way back to Boston. Took a shower, did some laundry, and then headed out to Phoenix last week for Hortonworks sales kickoff and partner kickoff. So, uh, been gracing the Midwest and the mountain area for the first part of 2018. That's awesome. We had uh, we had Kyle on last week, so he was able to drop in when we talked about uh, week three. So maybe at some point we can get everybody in the course. So we'll just have have all four of us at the same time. That'll be awesome. Yeah, that'd be really great. It's not going to happen, but it would be really awesome. Oh, we've yeah. got like 11, 11 shots at it, right? We've only <laughs> I, four. Bet. <laughs> I bet uh, we never get it done. Yeah, I would, I would bet we never get it done. Unicorns don't exist. Yeah, I bet this is the best we're ever going to get. Yeah. Well, Me being honest, three. the best you're ever going to get. That's right, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> this is just tying what we had last week. <laughs> we could just splice them in. Yeah, but it's exciting that we're here together. We're doing like a... A duo one from the uh, Blue Sky Lab. Yeah, welcome back to, to Boston, to yeah. New England. Yeah, I'm glad you're you. back. Uh, I know it's rough down there in Jersey. Yeah, very rough. <laughs> Hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I say gangster? I don't know. Nah. <laughs> nah. Not Just hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, we're here to talk about week four. And it was a really, really interesting um, week for us. I think so we really went into the neural networks. So we actually have the um, labs over here or the individual classes. It was the neural networks and we talked about <laughs> the neural networks and the application of it. So we went into some examples. My favorite part, I have to say, for this actual class are the um, logic tables. So when I was in school, logic tables were my favorite. Uh, the one thing that I think they didn't really go into a lot of details was the nerd. actual the nerd glasses <laughs> i can put my glasses on <laughs> um so i actually did a blog post about this on my website commondenial.com to really talk about different types of logic tables because he really only covers a couple of them in the actual review and i think it's really important to get the larger idea about the po about the logic tables and basically the impact that it makes with regard to data i mean i loved them i still remember to this day of like the excitement I had when I had to do like logic tables for uh, class, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like so cut and dry and clear. Logic's <laughs> my favorite word. Like whenever someone's having a discussion, I'm like, that's illogical. So like, you, it makes no sense. Are you a Spock then? Yeah, you're a Spock. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> no um, emotion. <laughs> so my favorite part was getting away from the uh, the regression and all the algebra and logistic regression, getting into neural networks and you know something new. Uh, you know, building on what we've done, but. Uh, really starting the foundation for what I think the next couple weeks are going to be in the class as well. So I, it was cool to get into this part of machine learning and start to uh, dig into that a little bit more. Yeah, and how they were actually using, I think they were like how they identified numbers, right? And then one of the examples was um, here's like what the number that we see and how we identify what we actually say that it actually is. And that came up and that was pretty cool to actually see it in action, which is, you know, they show you the examples yeah. um, under the application of neural networks, which is pretty cool. Yeah, for me, I, it was weird to kind of go through and look and like I thought neural networks, but I never really understood that it's like they're basically it's just like how the human body works to some extent. Right. And they were talking about neurons. Yeah. And so there was like a primer on how, you know, your brain works and everything. The other thing that was really cool, but I can't remember. I was I'm looking through my notes right here, but it was really interesting how he was talking about. You know, you, you think about your brain and everything like that, but you know, there, there. I don't know if it would, I don't know if it's a law or if it's just a theory out there that the brain only uses one machine learning algorithm, and it's pretty much. I mean, it, it's pretty much just the same way that you use vision and everything, and that same algorithm's kind of done over and over. Do you guys remember remember that what I was talking about? Where they were talking, he was talking about the algorithm, the way your brain works. 
I remember like the diagram, like I remember even like showing it, but I don't, I, I don't know past that detail yeah. or off the top of my head. Yeah, I can't go much further than that, but I remember him saying like, it's one algorithm, but it, it changes, it, it, you know, evolves over time, which is, I mean, how machine learning right. algorithms need to be expect. Um, and what you would expect. Yeah. I just expected it to be four or five different ones. You know, I, I mean, more than just one, one of the same ones, but I guess that kind of makes sense from, from a biological perspective, because then you can just tune it for each different one. But I don't know. I mean, think about it. So we talk about machine learning, we talk about, you know, all these different algorithms that are out there, but with your brain, it uses one, but yet why in a data scientist tool toolbox do we have so many different ones, right? Why do, why, why do we have one for automated cars that may be different for looking at, looking at other pieces? Or is it like, I don't know, it's like, what is it, Highlander? Like one, one to rule them all? Like maybe we should just <laughs> use that. Well, I think that they're customized for specific use cases, for specific outcomes, and, and really, uh, to get a better sense, I know my brain can't process, you know, what needs to be done for a, you know, self-driving car. I mean, I guess I can drive a car, but yeah, not well. You, you, can um, <laughs> really? you can drive a car better than a machine. Mm. Uh, have you seen my driving record? It's up for debate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm from, remember, I'm, I'm from Boston, so I definitely cannot drive better than a machine. I'm just a tool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> he said it. I didn't have to say it. I was waiting. I, I was preemptively <laughs> saying that. Yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's probably better driving than Jersey drivers, so we'll give him that. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, that just it was just kind of interesting for me that, you know, that that's the piece. Like, I, I get it that I'm not going to be able to process data and do things a lot faster than machines and so, some of the other pieces. But, you know, we're still beating the, the machines with, with other pieces. And the fact, you know, the like I said, I don't know if it's a law or a theory, but that it's just one that it's just one algorithm. That's that's really interesting to me. So Yeah. You know, the entire course, I was just thinking of the Silicon Valley, uh, not hot dog, hot dog app. And just every time, like, hot dog, not hot dog. I actually have the app on my phone, so I was playing around with it during some of the some of the videos. But that's the, the whole neural network and, you know, uh, machine learning is kind of what came to me this week as I was watching the videos and reading the, the stuff in the course. So basically what you're saying is they need to update the course with and say, like, download the app and test it out. And be like, this is how... No networks yeah. works. You think that's what they should do. That's what I was getting at. We need a sponsorship from the hot dog or no hot dog uh, app. Is that is that is that I what we're like talking about? Dog. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Silicon what Valley season five to come out in March. So yeah, not yeah. to take us too far off topic here. So well, no. kind of going into that, I don't know if you guys saw. I'm gonna blend in some news too. So did you guys see where um, there's an app out there where you can take a picture and it's gonna tell you like what famous photo you look like? Yes. Well, I've seen it on. Um, Facebook, which I can't stand. Please, I please, I beg you, people, stop taking the question or stop posting. Like, where you went to school, your likes, your first car. These are security questions. Can I beg you? Can I not take this time to do like a PSA to be like, stop posting this stuff on Facebook and allowing people to know this personal information about you? It drives me crazy. Anyways, I I have, no, no, no. I, I have another thing. You keep posting all that personal information. I want to stay employed. We all want to stay employed. I mean, you know, every data breach or anything like that, I mean, it makes, you know, makes, makes us so much more important. And, I mean, that helps us with security. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, You're I mean, killing me. Well, no. You're I mean, killing me. If everybody did everything secure, I mean, then, then what, would they need, what would they need security It's impossible. <laughs> impossible. <laughs> it's but you're impossible. chasing perfection with it. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I'm just... I'm, I'm just begging people and i like love it because i know these people who have like worked for security companies and i want to post like you didn't realize you worked for a security company you're not supposed to be telling these questions like personal questions about your life that i can easily use to find out what your password is and go in and take some in very important information from you it's like the top five passwords can be chosen in those questions that are on facebook right now oh, like, birthday so hometown ridiculous. when were you like what household were you born dog's first name that's a uh, like 50 percent of the people's passwords out there right now yeah it's frustrating Anyways, so, yeah. to answer your question, yes, I did see it. It was on Facebook. Yeah, so it's pretty awesome, um, you know, and I thought it was just like, okay, that's something cool that, you know, you can do, and, you know, it's funny, like, you see the comparisons, like, you know, yeah. does it look like you, does it not? Did you but, do it? No, no, and so what I saw, though, was I saw somebody talking about it on Twitter, and I, like I said, I thought it was just some kind of fun fun application, but I, what, what I'm starting to hear rumors about, and I haven't confirmed this, is that what they're really doing is it's a way for them to take, get amass all this different data about facial to to train against facial recognition 
to be able to do yep. it. So yep. you, you create I believe this that. fun app and you can build this data lake for all these people that are taking pictures uh, of their face and stuff. And so that kind of goes into the neural network and machine learning that we were talking about. And I was like, holy cow, man, you it's it. like a, you know, crowdsource. It's kind of like, do you remember the uh, recapture? And they still have some out there, but it was pretty much, you know, with Google, you'd have to, you know, is that a seven or an eight? And it was like, hey, making sure you weren't a robot whenever you want to put a comment on or, you know, re yep. redo your password. Well, I mean, that's what, that's what yep. they were doing. Um, Google was doing for all the books and everything they were trying to do is they were trying to train, you know, have, have the training data for, to be able to recognize and be able to actually process all these books from, uh, you know, all these libraries and everything. So same thing now with facial recognition. Yeah. No, I believe it. I mean, it makes sense. And that's a great way of getting the data and especially to post it on something as simple and reproductive as Facebook in the sense of it just keeps going and going and going, right? You see a picture and see what identifies it as another painting. You're like, oh, I want to see what my picture looks like. I want to know about that. Yeah. And it just keeps adding more and more information. It's genius. So it's, I don't like it, but it's genius. Yeah. So when it becomes your, so now you, you can be more pissed off, uh, Banks, because <laughs> You're, because you're part of your two-factor authentication is going to be your facial recognition. So people are putting these, you should go and tell everybody on Facebook, quit putting pictures of yourself because yeah. in the future you'll be able to use that, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just hold the iPhone up to Facebook and you'll open their phone. Um, so, so you're going to have I a job for a long yeah, time, I'm, Banks. I'm going to download the app after this, but I wonder what my picture would be, like what historical figure or painting my picture would be compared to. I don't know. I saw mm -hmm. one. I don't know if it was real or not, <laughs> but it was like Putin and the Mona Lisa. It was insane. <laughs> I was going to say like Abe Lincoln or George Washington, but I guess. I I'd say it was Pee Wee Herman, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have the Abe Lincoln beard. Like that, in the Abe Lincoln beard, we don't have a statue. Yeah, uh, and you don't have the Abe Lincoln yeah. height. Okay, oh, there oh, we go. Right. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Am I at an optimal height for you now? <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to Hopkinson. <laughs> I love it. Whenever something bad happens when I come back to Massachusetts, I'm like, geez, I'm so happy to be back here. You guys are so friendly and kind. Yeah, we're so happy to have you back, too. <laughs> he says very sarcastically. <laughs> I love it. Don't so, worry, you'll be behind your... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, kind of rolling, rolling back in, you know... Well, right, network, we're here for really cool, The handwritten... I mean, we did go through some of the handwritten applications, but... Um, Hey, this is the first week. So last, you know, last time we were talking, I, I wasn't caught back up. So I'm caught back up, got everything in, but hey, I didn't fail out of the quizzes, but I, I, I went to the last one. So I got to the last one. And there was like two problems that I kept just, kept just, like I swore they were right. And um, so, yeah. you know, I'm not giving anything away here that, uh, you know, shouldn't be given away with the course. So if you're taking the Coursera course, you know, I'm not breaking any terms here, but you know, one tip for me was as you're kind of going through those problems, kind of just, you know, as you're working them out, remember, you know, remember which ones were wrong and which ones weren't. So, because for me, like I was convinced, you know, and, and yeah. so, it's, so it got a little difficult. And like I said, you only get three tries before it times you out in eight hours. Week two, that happened to me. I got timed out, had to come back in. Once again, as long as you have everything in by the end of the week it's, or end of the uh, whole term, you're fine. But uh, I, I almost got locked at week four, but I, but I was able to complete it. And I'll tell you what, these Octave problems or MATLAB problems, they're getting more intense too. So Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they yeah, they are. And they I will say though that um they it does tell you when you got the question wrong or the answer wrong. It does tell you which one you got wrong. Yeah. But it obviously doesn't tell you what you did wrong. And a lot of them are, you know, check all that apply. And yep. those those are the ones I basically get just lost on, get stuck on. It's just yeah, it's painful yeah. for me. I gotta put it on the mole skin. <laughs> There are minute differences too between one or two or two and three. Yeah. And I found that well, this is week four, so we're what a what a third of the way in now. So yeah, we can yeah. talk about like our recap, you know, a third of the way in in a minute. But third of the way in, I found best practices really to um, eliminate you know t terms within the paragraph that might or might not be right, and use that as the qualifier for whether or not it's check all if, if it applies or not. Instead of looking at the whole you know you know the whole. Um, answer that might apply or might not apply and then evaluating that way eliminate certain parts and then see if that works that's, yeah. that's one of my takeaways and it's it's worked i actually this is the first time i didn't get timed out or have to you know take the test more than twice so okay pretty happy with that. yeah man well, um the, the inverse so week four everybody watching it i'm not giving away any answers but watch those inverses man because sometimes you're like is that mm -hmm. a speck on my screen you know so <laughs> some some jelly on the screen who knows <laughs> That's adorable. So yeah, so we are officially a third of the way done. I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. What do you guys think? You know, third of the way in, 
biggest takeaways? I'm going to get my certification, um, I think. So once again, just like I was saying last week, make sure you keep up. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I would just say, you know, just be patient and take some time. And to your point, like realize it, like I, even like those questions, the answer is there, right? So you just have to read it carefully um, and really just understand and think about it. Just be logical. Like, does that make sense? And like, not like try to look too deeply into it. Um, Cause it, the good thing is that they let you take the um, test a couple of times and even the programming a couple of times, you know, as many times as you want. So just remember that and don't beat yourself up over it. And if you have to walk away from it and come back a couple of hours later, or something like that, then take that opportunity. Um, but it's going to be okay. Yeah. Thomas and Aaron, I, I agree. I think that this course is building on itself. So stay caught up, stay, you yeah. know, into it, you know, maybe even look back uh, and just refresh yourself before you go into the yeah, week that you, the current week, uh, because I found that it it snowballs, and if you are behind, you're going to stay behind, and you're going to have some troubles, uh, both in the the understanding and the the lectures, the quizzes, but also the MetLab and the Octave. I, I found that uh, it's getting, like you said, more and more intense. There's times where you actually have to go back and rerun things or add things to it, and um, you know, it's a struggle. So you know, keep it, keep up with it. Uh, you're, you're one third of the way there, so you know you can do it. Just keep on uh, sticking with it because on week 10, 11, 12, I have a feeling that it's going to be uh, pretty intense, pretty yeah. pretty yeah. much of a struggle. So before we wrap up, I did want to ask, um, we don't have Biggie Smalls behind us. What do we What do we have behind us today? What is this? I was about to say it, so I just want to you know, pay attention to the lovely artwork that Brett did here for Big Data. This is kind of like my, this representation of my beard since I don't have one. <laughs> nice and cleanly shaped. Uh, it's, it's there. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our nice big day. <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brett has a black eye. <laughs> this is why, A, I can't play poker, and I literally say, like, my looks could kill, because basically I will give you the dirty eye. Um, you know, so this is our big data beard. Um, nice logo from Brett, and hopefully you can see it. Yeah. Did a great job. Good job, buddy. I have a little smudge on the... The mustache, you just had some, uh, something to eat. But other than that, thank you. <laughs> it's perfect. Well, so, awesome. Yeah. So week four in the books. Now we're rolling into week five. Everybody, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode and so that you can follow along. And uh, we will see you next week when we're discussing week five. Hopefully, everybody will be on the team. I have faith. And everybody, yes. everybody can be on the call. But we'll see what we can do. Thanks again. All right. Enjoy the week, everyone.